Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins in 1931. Henri Charrière, commonly known as Papillon, a thief and safecracker, escapes through the window after stealing, and goes to his boss, Jean Castille. Castille warns Papillon about what would happen to those who betray him, showing his gang member torturing a man. Therefore, warns him to be careful. He comes out with the money, handing the diamond to the boss. Papillon is waiting outside for Nanette, his lover. He gives her a lovely necklace, and displays some diamonds that he wouldn't have handed to his boss. As the two walk away, a guy notices them. Specifically, the jewelry Nanette is holding. The two engage in playful flirtation while walking along the street. Nanette then confesses to Papillon her desire to live in the country. However, Papillon is unsure whether he will have enough money in the country. He requests six months to save money, but she cannot wait that long. Their discussion is cut short, when his landlord comes to collect the rent. However, as Papillon opens the door, the cops rush in and take him under arrest. He is being accused of killing Roland Legrand. The victim was the same guy that Papillon's boss had captured the previous night. Although Nanette claims Papillon was with her the whole night, the cops don't believe her, and take him away. When Nanette sees Papillon in jail, she informs him that he wants to appeal. Why is he punished for a crime he didn't commit, but he says it's useless. It's a well thought out conspiracy. He requests that Nanette forget him, she responds that this is impossible. A guy named Julet warns him that he would never be able to escape jail without money. He then points to a counterfeiter called Louis Dega, a millionaire. Papillon notices Dega while heading to the ship that would transport them to the jail, and he realizes that many people recognize him. He approaches Dega right away after getting aboard the ship, and offers him protection in return for money, so he may escape, but Dega rejects his offer. The same night, while lying next to Dega, a big prisoner rips into another prisoner's stomach, and steals money. Dega thinks that his life is in danger after seeing all of this. The next day, Dega tells Papillon that he accepts the deal. Papillon keeps him alive until his wife's appeal is granted. When the prisoners are sleeping again, the same prisoner approaches Dega, but Papillon takes action immediately, and stops him. Other inmates applaud as the two fight. They only stop as the guards enter, letting steam out. Inspecting each prisoner's hand for evidence of a recent battle, they find Papillon and punish him. The next day, the ship reaches its destination. All of the prisoners are lined up to avoid chaos, Julet hurt his knee, so he may visit the hospital and figure out how to get away. The warden informs every new prisoner on the island, that you are all thinking of leaving. You may attempt because you are all free, but if someone is spotted, they will be shot, and if you manage to escape the bullet, you will starve to death, as there are only thorny bushes here. Additionally, hungry sharks will be waiting for you if you attempt to flee via the ocean, and you will become their food. Additionally, you will spend the next two years in solitary prison if you return. You will spend the rest of your life on this island, if you try to escape again, otherwise, you will spend five years in solitary confinement. If you murder someone, you will also be executed. After these instructions, the warden leaves. When Papillon and Dega arrive at their barracks, Papillon immediately settles down in the corner, and orders Dega to stay there. He then asks a prisoner who is allocating work in the prison when Dega butts in. The guy agrees to help them, and gives Dega a notebook after deciding how much money they'll provide. Dega then takes the money from his butt. The following day, they are getting job roles. Dega and Papillon are supposed to be in the infirmary, but a deputy warden sends them to Route Zero as revenge for Dega. They gather rocks on Route Zero, and Dega has no use there. While pulling a trolley down a track, Dega informs Papillon that he has diarrhea. As a result, part of his money gets lost on the way, which Papillon eventually finds. As they continue their work, they stumble across some stuck women, who are led by a big man. The guard allows them to join the cart which prisoners are pushing. Papillon approaches the big man immediately, and asks if he can get them out of there. Papillon offers $2,000 in return. When the guy calls the guard, Papillon suddenly offers to give him $4,000 in cash. So the man agrees, and says something different to escape from the guard. He advises Papillon that his boat is on the other side of the river, he'll be here for another three days. He may come whenever, but he'll accept $5,000 instead of $4,000. Some of the prisoners on the island want to steal Dega's money, since they know he has a lot of it. While Dega and Papillon are bathing, along with others, the prisoner fights them, but Papillon destroys them. Dega alerts him that the guards are approaching, but Papillon yells at him. As night comes, Dega apologizes to Papillon, and understands he won't be capable of waiting until his wife rescues him. So he decided to leave with Papillon. The following day, Julet is brought in. 
he purposefully hurt his foot and knees and goes to the hospital to escape, murdering two police officers during an escape. He is publicly executed in front of everyone. When Juliet dies, Papillon and Dega are charged with carrying his body to the forest. While taking the body to the forest, Dega gets sick and can't carry on. The guard commands him to go on, but when he cannot do so, he whips Dega's back. Papillon picks up a rock, smashes the guard's skull with it, and then escapes, since he has no idea how to help Dega. While some guards take up Dega, others quickly chase him. He dives into the river and rushes to the big man who agreed to get him out of here. While Papillon urges him to go, the man demands cash. Papillon says he doesn't have money, but if he is taken out of this place, he will pay double the amount requested. He promises that he has a lot of money in Paris, but Papillon's plan fails. The guards surround him, the big man laughs and says that even if he had the money today, he wouldn't take him out, since the warden pays us double to report idiots like him. Papillon returns to the same prison again. The warden informs him, fortunately, the guard he assaulted survived, and he will now be sent to solitary for two years. The place is too silent, which affects Papillon's mental health. He makes every effort to keep himself busy, eating little and working out. Although in the name of food, only lentil soup is given, which makes him very weak, and causes the majority of them to pass away. A few days later, Papillon discovers a coconut in the water bucket. Dega sent for him after paying the guards with things. Every day, Papillon receives a slice of coconut in this way. However, the warden once sees coconut, and asks Papillon about it. But Papillon doesn't mention Dega. The warden orders Papillon's ration to be cut in half, causing him to get weak and lose the will to escape. Once again, the warden asks Papillon for the name of the person who supplied coconuts, but Papillon remains silent. And he orders his guards to keep Papillon in complete darkness for the remainder of his term in solitary confinement. Papillon begins to see and imagine things in pitch blackness. He recalls his time spent with Ninette, but Dega is being silly. He then finds a vault and attempts to access it, but is unable. The vault unlocks when the mime Dega reappears, revealing his former self on the other side as the scene fades to darkness. Papillon's mental health isn't what it was before. As a result of his declining mental health, the jail administration transfers him to a medical facility for treatment. Meanwhile, Dega has been employed as a warden's aide. When Dega sees him, he expresses disappointment and says, you are correct, I won't be able to get out of here. My wife, who married my lawyer, is doing well. Dega apologizes to Papillon because he blames himself for Papillon's condition. Then, he learns that Papillon is only pretending to be mentally sick. They then discuss an escape strategy, in which they will take advantage of the prison's upcoming movie showing event. When told they need Celia's help, Papillon displays irrational behavior and pushes Dega away. The scene changes to Papillon witnessing the infirmary attendant assaulting a patient named Maturette in the comfort room. He then approaches Maturette, and offers him the chance to flee with them, in return for keeping the hospital attendant busy, and Maturette accepts. The next day, Papillon, Dega, Celia and Maturette discuss their escape strategy. Following the encounter, Dega worries about Celia, but Papillon is confident in him. Then to put the guards to sleep, he hands Dega the sedatives. On Sundays, everyone enjoys themselves. Dega requests a bottle of alcohol, and then adds the sedatives to it. Maturette is having a flirtatious relationship with the attendant in the hospital. Papillon and Celia arrive quickly and take him down. Maturette kicks him and screams in anger. One of the guards downstairs hears it, and goes to see. Fortunately, the sedatives knock him out, and they attack the remaining guard downstairs. The three are waiting for Dega, serving the warden and his guests. Rain falls, the electricity goes off. Celia and Maturette want to go, but Papillon won't leave without Dega. He appears with the important pathway keys. They leap the barrier in the dark. When Dega jumps, the power returns. He jumps but falls badly, breaking his leg. Celia wants to leave Dega, but Papillon won't. On their journey into the jungle, they're trapped by armed guys. A guy who looks to be the leader comes, and it turns out that he is the one with whom Celia discusses the boat. Although the four can get into the ocean, their little boat cannot handle their weight. Celia discusses leaving Dega behind, but Papillon refuses again. Sadly, a storm is moving in their direction. In a desperate attempt to murder Dega, Celia grabs a knife. Maturette tackles him, Papillon and Celia then start to fight. Celia overpowers Papillon, but Dega grabs the knife and kills Celia. After throwing his corpse into the ocean, and making their way through the storm in the middle of the sea, the scene goes dark. In the morning, they are on an island in Colombia. They believe they are now totally free. But none knows where these folks are from. 
Although Dega and his third partner want to remain, Papillon intends to leave. Papillon goes alone when he sees a police car approaching, as the nun has already informed the police. Papillon runs to Dega to escape the situation, but they get detained due to Dega's broken leg. The police shoot Maturette. Once again, the two return to Devil's Island. Papillon is sentenced to five years in solitary prison, where he has already served two years, for attempting to escape once more. Papillon lives there for another five years and survives. After that, he is sent to Devil Island High Class. There is little security because of the high cliffs and the sea on all sides. When Papillon comes here, he finds Dega once again. It turns out, the warden immediately took him to Devil's Islands after catching him. Seeing a way out, Papillon turns to look over the cliff. The two tell Dega that riding the waves will take them to the land, making a raft out of coconuts. Dega sends Papillon a bottle with one of his artworks hidden inside. On the day of their escape, Dega refuses to go. Dega assures Papillon that everything will be okay, and that he is a part of the island. Following the last handshake and a hug between the two men, Papillon jumps from the cliff. Dega first believes that Papillon has not survived, but he suddenly shouts out Dega's name to assure him. Papillon floats in the middle of the ocean, looking above, where an aeroplane passes by. In 1969, old Papillon is on a plane back to Paris, to publish his memoir. His wife convinces him to share his experiences in writing. He informs the publisher that his tale is the story of many men, and he still carries Dega's painting. We see a photo of real life on Re Papillon Charrière. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.